Yeah. 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 You comfortable there? Yeah. Okay. You guys want me to sit up there? Or do you guys? Oh, I guess I have to be on. Sorry, Joan. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to make a solicitor. Hello. Okay, that one's on. Yeah, that is Terry. That's our Terry. Well, yeah. But if it's hard, you can get it. Other than getting pretty good. That's going. Yeah, yeah. Is that an extra pen right there? Sure. Does anyone need a water? Is there someone like here? If someone would like some. Look at the pocket. Right. <laughs> Terry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. How's my audio? Sounds good. Okay, good. I have another phone. Uh, hi there. Oh, okay. I didn't know who you were going to do. Do we have? I believe we do. Nancy, unmute your mic. Any? I believe we're currently recording and streaming. Um, and I think John may have enabled the uh television broadcast as well okay all right it's 701 i'm going to call to order the march 15th 2021 meet of the marsville borough council we all rise from moment of silence in the budget <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag United the United States of America to, to the republic for which it stands one nation the God divisible with liberty justice for all As Micah? Yes, sir. Um, is Virginia on the call? Uh, I believe she should be. I need a roll call whenever she's ready. Uh, 
She's on the call at this point. Virginia, are you there? Hmm. I'll run downstairs. I believe she just joined back in. Did she join in? Hello. You guys there? Yes. Yeah. You guys yes. there? Okay, sorry. It just connected my call as, as we were doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Just want to make it clear. Yes. Do you want me to do roll call? Yes, please. Okay, sure. Mayor Ravella? Councilman Bowers? Here. Councilwoman Halava? Here. Councilman Nickel? Here. Councilman Parker? <laughs> I know he's there. Here. I'm a... Okay. My um, mic. Is... Can you hear me? Yes. Now we can. Uh, Councilman Paul. Here. Councilman Robinson. Here. Councilwoman Sherlock. Here. Councilman Yeager. Here. Our borough solicitor. Here. Yeah. Yes. Present. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Um, just announcement, we will have an exec session at the end of the meeting uh, for personnel uh, and real estate. All right, moving to uh, four announcements and presentations. I'm unaware of any, so we'll move on to five public comment uh, and address, and you have minutes. Somebody gonna have to, I do not have another. Council President, I have it. The first one signed up is Eileen Dreisbeck. Eileen Dreisbach, 75 Harrison Avenue. I believe John tested it already. Pull down a few a little bit. Pull down a little bit. Thank you. Eileen Dreisbach, 75 Harrison Avenue. Um, the reason I'm here is um, I see on the agenda that there is um, a call for a motion for the engineer to submit an application for the Manor Park Playground um, for grant. And I just want to speak on this. Everyone knows that knows me that it's near and dear to my heart. And I understand that someone reached out to council members and said that they're not voting for it. And I hope that you all vote for it because it's a necessity in our borough. Um, I've been involved in this for over 33 years. I know a lot of people don't know the history of it. Um, about 33 years ago, my son was a teenager and him and several of his friends got caught in Falls Township with tomatoes and eggs in their car on mischief night. They were sent to the youth aid panel and they told the youth aid panel there's nothing for them to do in Marsville. So they're community service was coming to council and requesting some type of amusement or recreation for kids that we didn't have. And they came up and they spoke. And for eight years after that, I came up and followed up speaking at every meeting. 25 years ago, we got a grant for the playground. And well, in between, I did fundraisers, I sold a million Gertrude Hall candy bars, um, 
gourmet lollipops. Uh, we had a, the flyers come up and we had a hockey marathon for the day. And it was a nice time. But now I know that the playground has reached its end. It's been there 25 years. We need a new one. The swings in the merry ground aren't bad because I know the merry ground wasn't put in that long ago because I actually donated $2,000 towards the play or the merry go round. Um, also, the tunnel slide when it broke, um, I spoke with Game Time and it took us months going back and forth before we finally got a new tunnel slide. But then that was put in and it was also destroyed. So that was taken out. So the climbing equipment there definitely has to go. But on another note, we never had the proper um, surface put under the playground from the time it was put in there. And that was one of the major issues there. I came before council numerous times asking for appropriate wood chips to be put in there. They never were. Um, so I just want to plead with everyone right now to please vote to put the playground in. We can't put one in Williamson Park right now because the dike has not been accredited. So we need a playground for the kids. There have been numerous kids down there every day of the week. I walk my dog and I know for a fact that they're there. So please keep the kids in mind and keep something in the community for them to do so they don't go on the streets again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have Noel Spiri. Good evening, Council. Noel Sperry, 531 Prospect Avenue, Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Um, I'd actually like to read a statement from Hedda Sherapan of the Fred Rogers Center. I've always thought of March as a month of hope. Spring is on its way. It's been a whole year since the pandemic changed our lives, and we're just now beginning to see hopeful signs of returning to some kind of new normal. For us at the Fred Rogers Center, this has always been a time to celebrate because we're coming up on Fred's birthday, March 20th. We call it Won't You Be My Neighbor Day. A number of years ago, we started it as an annual tradition to honor Fred on that day by wearing a sweater and doing something neighborly. A little known fact about Fred Rogers, it was his testimony to Congress that saved PBS. Without him, there'd be no Sesame Street, Zoom, or other programming that has enriched many, many lives. I'm urging people of Morrisville and in the, in the town to join me, take some time on Saturday, reach out to your neighbors. Do something nice for them, or just say hi, that's it. It's all it needs to be, because that will enrich our own neighborhood and ourselves. Also, I'd like to say happy St. Patrick's Day to all of our Irish neighbors in town. Thank you. All right, that's everyone that's signed up here. Um, I don't know if we have anyone virtual. Um, Terry, do you see anyone? Yes, there's a few with their hands raised. Uh, I'll go down the list here. Uh, the first is Jacqueline Carroll. You could unmute yourself. Hi, um, my name is Jacqueline Carroll. I'm at 36 Union Street, Morrisville. Um, just here to talk about Williamson Park. Um, uh, I'm just concerned with uh, the outcome of it. Uh, I want I want to see the park seen. Okay, hey guys, guys, George. No. Something that I think is an issue is that the last meeting it was brought up that our comments were being ignored and it sounds to me as though that's something that's happening and I would like to urge you guys to actually listen to our comments. I don't mean to come off as being aggressive, um, come off as speaking as a townsperson who is concerned about our recreation, um, that being the biggest park in our town and it being used every day for multiple types of activities such as baseball, basketball, tennis, just going on walks or if people just want to sit out and get some fresh air, or bring their kids out of the house to get some activity in. It's all very important 
And I think that it's something that also has potential to bring more people into this town, events and money. If we let it, if we don't let it get blighted and if we keep continuing to bring in grants for it, it's a park that's still here. And as long as it's here, I think we should be allowing the grants to come in. I think that's more for the uh, commission people to decide. Um, but I think it's something that is important if we spruce it up and make it nice it can we can use it to its full potential everyone who i know in this town really appreciates that being there it's a staple for them to get activity out and i just hope you all can keep an open mind and not you know commit fully to one whole vision uh just yet all right Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, next, looks like we have a Mary Renda. Mary, if you're there, could you unmute yourself and uh, state your name and address? All right, uh, we'll, we'll come back to her. Uh, Joshua, if you'd like to go next. Hello, this is Mary. Oh, I'm sorry, Joshua, if you could hang on just a minute. Mary, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, I just want to say that I hope that council will appoint as our new borough manager somebody. We need, we can... need a, uh, we need a, oh, uh, a name and address. Brown Street, Mary Renda, okay? All right, I'm sorry. Okay, I got a little flustered there. I couldn't, I, for some reason, I couldn't get the thing to unmute. Okay, I hope, hope the council will appoint as our new borough manager, someone who can evaluate with fresh eyes the proposal by Morrisville Select LLC for development in Williamson Park and has no prior involvement with Joe McGrath. I hope this person has the skills and experience to evaluate the financial, social, and, and environmental impact um, of the proposed development on our borough and our environment. Um, the loss of our park is, is and the loss of our park. <laughs> Williamson Park is the vast majority of our open space here in Morrisville, a scenic walking destination on the river, a well used recreation area, home of the Morrisville Little League, uh, and a community gathering place. We, you know, I really feel that it would be a great blow to our community to lose this space. So please choose carefully to somebody skilled, experienced, and not prejudiced for this job. There's a problem with the audio on the cable. Also, I want to say there's a problem with the audio on the cable. Uh, there's an echo of some kind. When Jackie was speaking, it, she was very and hard to I'm understand. Speaking. And when I'm speaking, I'm sure that that happened too. So please fix the cable audio. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mary. Uh, Joshua, uh, you're up next, if you'd like to unmute yourself. Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Joshua Coombs. I live at 40 Union Street. It's a, a good two-second delay. Uh, am I good to go? I'm, I heard Mary say that there's a two-second delay. Should I hold on before my time starts? Uh, no, you should be good to go. There is always a delay with the TV stations just due to how the uh, life size recording works. Okay, okay. So, um, Normally when I talk, I've been here, you know, I've been trying to be more participant in all of this. And normally when I talk, I spend some time to structure out and write out my speech because I think that uh, in, in an attempt to be efficient at what I'm trying to communicate, I will do that uh, so I can be more articulate with what I'm saying and thought out. Uh, I'm not doing that this time. I'm, this is just me riffing, me speaking directly to everybody who's listening. And I think part of that is because I was very disheartened by what I had heard uh, after I had to leave because I had work in the morning. So I had to obviously go to, go to sleep and I know everybody has jobs and stuff, but I went back and I watched through the entirety of the last session because I wanted to see what I had missed. And as, Jack, as Jackie had brought up, uh, I also heard the comments about um, Councilman Ted uh, saying, that he has ignored what many of the people were saying and that he's not going to abide by conspiracy theorists. Now, at first, this had me extremely disheartened to the point where I didn't feel like I could continue watching 
the rest of the video because of just how personally kind of ignored I've been. But I kind of feel that if anything, to take something positive out of that, that maybe there is a wrong foot that has been gotten to in this discourse and that we might need to reframe this and that I want to have empathy for everybody who feels like they might be being accused or attacked of some kind of corruption or anything like that. Because if the response is to entrench and to make an other out of those of us who are trying to voice genuine concerns about something, I don't think that that's going to facilitate a community. That's not going to help us. And that we need to try to get rid of these barriers of cognition, of how we process information, so that we can actually hear one another. Now, I can then go on to say that obviously I'm not a council member. It's not my job to do that. And I don't know if you guys get paid. And I can understand that this might not be business as usual. There's more attention being drawn and it might be more of a burden. And oh, because I, as a person who's a server, understand what it's like to be of service and trying to serve people and how frustrating it can be when the people you're trying to serve and work for aren't like making it easy for you. And it's nothing nice to be accused of anything. So I really understand that. I want to come from a place of empathy. But I also do think that it's worthwhile to be hearing what we're trying to say, even when we're talking about this, the, the plan proposal, where if we see in there that there's not language explicitly trying to like protect the park, like it's not weird for us to be pointing out that seems like a bias. It seems like that there's an opportunity for somebody to come in and take it away. And that when we're trying, and I know like, okay, maybe that's a conspiracy theory, but that also means that if you have more information about that, we need to hear that stuff. We need to be a part of this process. Because if we're not, then, if we're not, then you're cutting us off and you're creating an, a, a fake other, because we're in this together. I don't know everybody's lives here. I wish I did. So I could be more personal be, and be more appropriate to people's needs. But like, it is so disheartening to hear myself after me pouring work into this stuff, be dismissed so offhandedly that I really hope that you guys can, and I'm talking to you, Ted, because you've been looking at something this whole time and not listening to people. I watched you ignore two speakers already. Uh, you're muted, I'm sorry. I know you're probably working. You're still muted, I'm sorry. I am, I know you're reacting to me. I want to hear what you have to say, but you're muted. Ted, so you're muted. I can't hear what you're saying. Yes. Hey, right. That's coming up. I can listen to you and write it down at the same time. I've heard okay. everything. Like, conspiracy theory has to do with being accused of corruption for voting to hear on to hear a proposal from a developer with no commitment to anything. That's what it was about. I can appreciate that. And if I am I allowed to respond, or am I out of time? Listen, you, have, you have three minutes. This is not this is not a debate. This is public I, comment. I know. I know. That's why this, I'm trying. This, to, what? How yes. much time does this gentleman have left? He's already at five minutes. Okay, then He's got thank five you minutes? for listening what? to me. Okay. Yeah, thank you for listening to me. I'm not trying to be attacking or anything like that. And I, yeah, that's my time, I suppose. Thank you for listening. All right, All right Terry, here you go next. Uh, next, we have Steve Fowler. Steve, if you could unmute yourself. Sure. Uh, thank you very much. My name is uh, Stephen Fowler. I live at uh, 444 Hillside Avenue uh, here in Morrisville. Um, I just want to um, to note that Williamson Park is is unique, as has been said by many people, as uh, Borough Council you know, fully recognizes, and I think as the uh, Bucks RDA also recognizes as as well. Um, I want to note that all healthy existing trees in the park should be kept not just for their beauty and shade cooling contribution to air quality in the borough. But they also provide a habitat for migratory and resident birds, also generally making the park a place where people can relax, walk, play, and yes, enjoy a little bit of nature in the middle of the borough. Once that is gone, it is gone forever. And I want you to, everyone, to just think about that when we go through our decisions. It is quintessentially in a modern American story, but becomes a stalemate over what is considered to be best for a community. It is a fight that asks us to consider what it is we value, what it is we is worth saving, and how to weigh our history, the open space, 
and parkland against the possible expediency evidenced by condemnation, confiscation of Williamson Park by the Bucks RDA, and ultimately, possibly, by the uh, Morrisville Borough Council. It is one of our heritage against technological advance and will be left for future generations of Morrisville residents to enjoy. You are being asked constantly to make decisions voting piecemeal on approval of concept plans that have included portions of the river levee and the taking of park from people of Morrisville and yes, also of Bucks County. I wanna uh, raise a point that in a Philadelphia Inquirer article dated the 11th of March, 2021, it stated that in a single night on October 20th, uh, 2020, October 2nd, um, estimated 1,000 to 1,500 birds perished when flying into skyscrapers in Philadelphia alone. A group such as the Academy of Natural Sciences of Drexel, Delaware Valley Ornithological Club, Audubon Mid-Atlantic, Valley Forge and Wincote Audubon Societies have also uh, raised the alarm at this, um, at this atrocity, really. Uh, in Philadelphia alone, this will mean turning off lights on tallest buildings by midnight to 6 a.m. Since 70% of our land birds are migratory, which is about 350 to 400 species, and of these 80% migrate at night, illuminated buildings- 30 seconds. Use, thank you. And disorient these nocturnal migrants. Since most native songbirds live in rural forested habitats, any intense lights can cause birds to collide with windows or walls. Further development along the Delaware River will only exacerbate the problem. I ask you to consider this when you're making your decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, seems like that is all of the folks that had their hands up in Zoom. Right. Uh, let me get back into this. All right, so. Public comment is closed. We're going to move on to another action item. Item six, which is approval of the minutes. Uh, can I have a motion? Is, is um, uh, Daryl Adair? Is under, did Daryl Adair want to? Um... I did not have a Daryl. Um... He's on the Zoom. He's on the Zoom. Is that Daryl? <clears throat> Daryl, you're on mute. Did, um, did you wish to do public comment? <laughs> Yes, if I, if I could, I would have really appreciated it. Um, my name is Daryl Adair. Uh, I actually live in, in Langhorn. Uh, my son and my daughter-in-law uh, live right there on Morrisville, right along the park. Uh, one of the, the gems of your town is, in fact, the park. Uh, you don't have to go very far in our state to go down to, to Chester or Philadelphia and see what constant building and not leaving open space for people, what it winds up looking like. Now, you, you, you have this spot, and like has been said before me, uh, once you build on it, it's a done deal. Uh, it, 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 once it's gone, it's gone. And the fact that you have had this for all these years and the fact that you're considering getting rid of it, I, I think really needs to be considered strongly. No, I don't know every issue. I don't know every issue you guys deal with. But I do know whatever whatever taxes or anything else or, or monies that this could possibly bring in, it also brings in other problems with it. And it shows people, especially the youth, that uh, the interest in them is minute. And I really think you need to think about that before you just go ahead and make a decision. Getting rid of land that they're not making any more of is a foolish mistake if you don't consider keeping some land for open space for kids. And that's my comment. Thank you for listening. Do you mind, Mr. Dear, would you mind just giving us your official address? For the record, sure. Please. 604 Dorm Road is where I live in Langhorn. In Langhorn, thank you. Is there anyone else? All right, I'm going to officially close public. Comment. We can move on. All right, six, which is approval of the minutes. Six A. Motion is needed to approve the borough council regular meeting. So moved. Oh, oh. Right, Nancy moved it. Have a second. second. Oh, no, somebody. All in favor? 
Hi. Hi. I, I actually have a comment. Um, it, it, in those minute um, meetings, uh, in those minute me in those minute meetings, um, it has um, the presence of council people, and in parentheses it says Zoom. Uh, I'm not sure what that actually means, uh, but if it means that all council people were on Zoom, then those minutes are not correct because um, for the last couple of meetings there were a few council people in here in Borough Hall. This was in December, Helen. Yeah, Nancy, um, there were people here in Borough Hall. Well, we all just voted and approved it. I'd suggest that if you want to change it on the next one, mention that during comments. Well, he didn't uh, say, he didn't say comments. He just said motion and then second, and then that went to a vote. Are, are we voting on just the 21st or all of them in block? 21st. Oh, so is there no one on council here that remembers if they were on Zoom or not? I was on Zoom. That's the point. I was, I was here in Borough Hall. Um, at, the, at the Borough Hall and there were people on Zoom. I'm not sure that that's what it means that it says via Zoom, we have a Zoom meeting here. I think it's just <laughs> identifying the fact that it was a Zoom meeting. Whether you're Zooming from Borough Hall or you're, you're, you're on the Zoom here, the meeting is via Zoom with, with our president that's via Zoom. So I think that's really what it's kind of talking about. I didn't yeah. take it as everybody was on Zoom. I took it as the Zoom option was there and everybody was on Zoom, no matter where you were Zooming in from. Well, that, that's my question. I'm trying to verify that that's what that means. If, and if it doesn't mean that, then those meetings minutes have to be changed. No, that's what it, it's okay. That is, that is legally fine. We don't have a problem with that, Helen. It means okay. the, meeting, the meeting is being held by Zoom, like during the pandemic, that's all. Some of you were clearly, I think you were at Borough Hall, as I recall, so. Um, okay. But it just means the meeting itself was conducted via Zoom. All right. That was moved, seconded, and passed. So we'll move on to six. Needed to approve the Borough Council regular meeting of January 21. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> all right. I'm assuming that's six C. Motion is in order to approve the Borough Council special meeting. Borough Council on February 2nd, 21. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extension? Uh, motion passed. Moving to phase seven, finance. Everyone has a treasurer's report. On to the promotion to approve the bill list. Bill? So moved. Second. Motion. Is that, just, is that Justin? Yes. Oh, thanks, Justin. Uh, quite, do I have a question? Uh, Ma'am. Um, actually, I don't know if you want to hear it now, or it, it's actually about the Gilmore bills, and I wanted to, I, I have questions, but I guess we can wait till we get to the motion about the, uh, the, the ramps. All right, because it, it involves that. So, so I'll wait for my question. Any other discussion? Daniel, roll call, please. Yes. <coughs> Councilman Bauer? Yes. yes. Councilwoman Halaho? Yes. Councilman Nickel? Yes. Councilman Paul? Yes. Councilman Robinson? Yes. Councilwoman Sherlock? Yes. yes. Councilman Yeager? Yes. And Councilman Parker? Yes. Motion passes. All right, moving on. Reports. 
Payday Mayor's Report. I don't believe it. Uh, Mr. Parker. Yes. Uh, I know there's no mayor official mayor's, mayor's report, but he did send something out that involves some certifications that uh, the chief had just received recently. So um, I don't know if the chief's going to mention that or not. Did that go to everyone or just select people? I don't remember seeing anything. I thought it went out to everyone. Um, I might have missed it. I'll, I'll, I'll check get it, it for you. It, it wasn't an email. It was in our one of our package deliveries. Got it. Got it. I, did get it. I saw the memos. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's um. Well, I, I guess I, I'll mention it then. That uh, Chief McClay was certified uh, with the Pima um, for um, completion training requirements in November, November 30th, 2020. And then also a um, an advanced certification. Uh, he completed training September fourteenth, twenty twenty. Uh, this came from the mayor, and uh, the letters actually came from. Uh, I'm sorry, we we got two letters that accompanied it, and the letters came from the Pennsyl from Pima, Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency. That's it. Thanks. All right, 8B, Police Chief's report. The Chief report. Yes, I'm here. Good evening, Council. Uh, four quick items. Um, April 9th, I'm going to have a bike sale from four to whenever I get rid of all the bikes. Um, if you looked in your crime report for February, we had a rape. Um, I can tell you that it was a known doer and there was no threat to the general public. Um, our crime numbers continue to go down from last year and continuing that way this year. And lastly, Bo Luna has officially announced his retirement as of May 1st. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Uh, HC manager's report. I don't know if you have anything, Micah. Not at this time, thank you. Uh, AD committee reports. Does anybody have anything they want to report? Okay. Moving on to action items. 9A, a call for a motion to adopt an updated comprehensive plan prepared and recommended by the Morrisville Planning Commission and the Bucks County. Can I have a motion? Can you open it up for discussion? So moved. Second. Second, discussion. Uh, just a brief one. I won't keep everybody. I hadn't heard back from comments. I sent something out to council members uh, just stating some things that I think are inaccurate in the actual pro in, in the comprehensive plan. I'm not looking to hold this up. I know we have other more important pressing issues, but I also don't like the idea that we have some inaccurate information. And um, I just, uh, and I guess I, for that reason, I hesitated to vote yes on this because I, I think these are things that we shouldn't just uh, rush through. And I do think it's a rush because we didn't get it till November. And we didn't get the um, we didn't get all of the edits until uh, late January, but um, I uh, I'm glad that they worked on this. I appreciate it. It's not something that's done overnight, and I don't think our review of it's done overnight. But um, the one thing I did ask was, and I think I asked this of uh, the, uh, Gilmore last time we met, should we include the, the second grant for Melvin for Melvin? Um, in this, uh, I didn't get an answer on that. Mr. Um, see Steve, Steve Fowler, he had mentioned some mitigate hazard mitigation issues that he thought should have been addressed, but we didn't go there. And I also had a suggestion about putting, uh, adding in the energy section uh, about um, our, our seeking some information regarding electrical charge cart, electrical car chargers. 
So those, those were just a couple of the suggestions, um, but if everybody's okay with the way it is um, and no one agrees with any of those, then I guess so be it. So that's it. Mr. Uh, uh, might I make a comment? Sure, go ahead, Ms. Thank Ms. you. So just my two cents, guys. Um, this is a requirement that we have to do. Um, there is nothing in this plan that, that um, binds us to anything. There is nothing in this plan, and I, I use quotes when I say plan because it's really a document that, that speaks to the town, but there is nothing in it that council as a body can't make a decision and vote on anything that is, is conflicting or, or completely opposite of what this plan is. This plan is required to have in, on file and it's, it's required that it be done. That's it. There is nothing about this plan that binds the, the, the borough to anything or requires us to do anything um, or not do anything. Um, when I hear, you know, we've got to protect the um, uh, things like we have to protect the, um, the, the parks, this document does not protect the parks and it does not develop the parks. Council makes those decisions as a body. So at the end of the day, this is a document that we need to we need to complete, we need to have on file, but doesn't bind us or change anything from a directional standpoint or otherwise. Um, I hate to call it busy work, but in my opinion, it's busy work. Um, it doesn't put us in any different position with, or, with it or without it, no matter whose name is on it. Um, I, I appreciate the work that's been done to it, and I appreciate the people that, that have taken an interest in it. And, and specifically, Nancy, Bob, I know you guys have taken an interest in this thing. It's a living document, though. Us approving it doesn't end that. You could add to it. You could take from it. You could, you could update it as we go. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. You just got to bring it to council for a vote. It's really that simple. This doesn't, approving this just marks the box and allows us to move on. It's a living document, though. It could change over time if we wanted to. Thanks, guys. And my understanding is that as some of the factual uh, inaccuracies the, um, in the plan, uh, the county will correct. Mr. Yeah, Parker, I thought, I, I thought, uh, uh, let, 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 um, let Bob go first. first yeah, thing. I just want to first of all associate myself with uh, the comments of Mr. Yeager. I completely agree with what he said. I think it's important to keep in mind that this is kind of our best presentation of where we stand right now, but it in no way obligates us or commits us or compels us to do exactly what is in there. Having said that, however, um, you know, I, I was one who tried to slow down the process because um, I thought when we first got, we got revisions back in October, November, um, some of the uh, a number of residents didn't seem to have an opportunity to made their comments. And I thought that it was important that we leave the study open long enough for everybody to have a chance to read it thoroughly, make comments. Uh, we could take the comments and, and do with it what, what we think is appropriate. Um, having, and in, in the meantime, we've gotten a number of comments and I believe some of those um, suggestions made by the planning commission and by individual residents have been reflected. They all haven't been necessarily, but I think there was an effort to try to bring this up to speed so that it's as accurate as possible. And over the weekend, um, I read the entire thing again, word for word, just to see where we stand. And in my humble opinion, I don't think there's anything in there that's a showstopper. There's nothing in there that I believe, again, it's my opinion, that um, would put us in a difficult position or requires to do anything that we haven't already talked about um, or in any way distorts where we are right now. They talk about the Williamson project in several spots, but they, they, they note that this is something that we are considering, the council is considering. Um, and I, I know that there is some confusion because it's listed under accomplishments and it's not an accomplishment, but I think the, the text is accurate. And, and I went through and I made a list of all the, correcting all the typographical errors and punctuation errors, just so that this is as good as we can make it. And I think having said that, you know, we, we, we've had months with it um, and it's now March. The thing was supposed to come out in October. I'm glad it didn't. We've all had six more months to play with it, um, but we need to move on. And as, as, as Mike points out, this is a requirement. You know, I, I think we were justified in taking extra time because a lot of people didn't really have an opportunity to look at it earlier. But having done that, we need to move on. We need to start closing things, you know, and getting things done, finish 
completed and we can so we don't have to have these conversations and talk once again about what we have to change and what we don't have to change so i i i recommend voting I, i'm going to vote for it um and everyone else can you know check their conscience thank you Hello. I was just going to say, um, I thought at the last meeting we said that if there were any uh, changes, they would just be submitted, but we could still vote on it and it wouldn't make an impact on the report. That's my understanding. I don't think we can vote on it and then have changes made afterwards. No, we can't. you're right, Justin. You, you, could, you could vote later to accept the changes. Right. That we can do. Um, okay. Well, Matt, I just had a comment. I, I agree with Mike and... Bob, if you're happy with this, um, I can vote on this tonight. I can vote for it. I can wait three months. It really doesn't matter to me. Um, but it seems like the majority of people want to, you know, get it moving, and I get that. Um, so I will say, Nancy, if you're not happy with it and you want to vote to table, uh, see if we can table it. And if you get to get the number of people, then well, it's I appreciate I appreciate that, Justin. But no, I, I I'm happy to go forward because I think that's the majority of council wants that. I just I mean, I appreciate Mike's statements even, but I don't want, I mean, in our, at the November, I just want to point out that in the, at the November presentation by the McGrath regarding the, the park plan, he pointed out our comprehensive plan, stating, making statements regarding what he read there to give him the impression that there were things that, that this is what this town wanted. And that, that's my concern, that those words might mean something to developers. Now, uh, if, if that's absolutely true, that uh, they can't hold us to any of those words, um, and I understand that we do make final decisions, but I wanted to make sure that that we don't get held to those words. And 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 honestly, the map two and map seven, they're just not right. I mean, one's a future map, but um, they're, they're inaccurate, and that's just my concern, and I didn't want to rush it through. But I have no problem if we want to vote on this evening, uh, then so be it. I'm okay with that. All right, anyone else? All right, we have a motion and a second. We'll put it for a vote and see how it goes. Uh, we do a roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Bowers? Yes. Ms. Halaho? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Sherlock? Yes. Mr. Yeager? Yes. And Mr. Park? Yes. Motion passes. All from the Bucks County Department of Health 2021 Mosquito Control Program, treat municipal properties for mosquito control. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Whomever. I just have one comment just for the public. This is for the Williamson Park and the Melvin area retention basin area. Those are the only two areas included in this. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 9C. Uh, I believe our engineer is still here, so we're going to call this for a motion and then we're going to let them speak on it and then we'll take comment. Uh, call for a motion authorizing the borough engineer to submit an application for the TDBG funding to the Buck Department and Community Development, requesting an amount of $500 and $55,000 to underwrite certain installations of new sidewalk along West Trenton Avenue and ADA ramps along Hillcrest Avenue and Water. And I have a motion. So moved. I'll second it. Uh, is our engineer from Gilmore Associates here with us? Yeah, we're, uh, Kurt and myself are here. Okay. Is there anything you want to say before? Uh, the yeah, the the curb ramp application is pretty straightforward. It's something we do every year. Um, it's um, essentially just applying for the 
various curb ramps um, along the roads that are being paved this this upcoming year. Um, the only difference with this year is that CDBG is uh, not covering engineering costs, architectural costs, and uh, design costs essentially. So it, it makes it a little different where in where typically CDBG would cover 100% of costs. Uh, the borough would be responsible for any engineering costs. And what we're trying to do is we're going to push design costs onto the contractor. So that way those costs can be covered, but there will still be some engineering costs probably in the ballpark of twenty to $30,000. Now, the, uh, I, I'll go first. The ramps are required every day, right? Yes. Does the grant cover CM costs or CI costs in your case? Uh, what do you mean by CI? Inspection. Uh, no, um, no, I, that would be considered an engineering service, and that that would be part of the twenty to thirty thousand engineering costs would be uh, construction inspections. So we'll we'll have, again, we're going to have the developer submit, and then probably hire a third party to do inspections and submit those inspection reports to us so we can review them to undercut engineering costs on our end, and therefore that should be covered by the CDBG. Okay, so you're essentially going to kind of make it a design build contract. Instead yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Mr. Parker, I have a question. Hey, ma'am. Uh, last March, we actually passed a motion to submit an application uh, for um, the CBDG for sidewalks on Trenton Avenue and the ADA ramps on Washington, Hillcrest, Grandview, Melvin. That was for $440,000. Now, we we did not receive that one is that correct if this is the same if this is the same one um you were so they awarded less than what was asked they awarded one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. so they asked for updated scopes which we submitted to them um i think we we cut out um several intersections from whatever now called. in december scott mentioned that we received one hundred twenty-five thousand for curb ramps. Is that the one you're referring to? Yes. Yeah. So we got 125 for the 444 that we requested. Yes. And now we're requesting another 555. Yeah. Yeah, you, we, we typically we, we, we submit for what we would uh, like to, to see built and what would uh, bring the borough up to speed with the roads they're paving. And uh, on, on, on the understanding that CDBG may not award that whole thing and we'll have to update and cut back the scope on the project. As 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 Mr. Parker mentioned, these are, you know, they're mandatory, which is why I made the comment that you sort of you, you can't ignore these. I mean, they they need to be done. Okay, thank you. Welcome. If I may, I have a question, Mr. Parker. Go ahead, sir. So the um, the previous grant that was accepted, the hundred and call twenty five thousand, that was CBG uh, CBDG also, correct? But it was prior to the new ruling, correct? So that could that be used for the um, cost of um, for your service on the new project, or is it have to so, be two different projects? Yes, for for this year's curb ramp projects, engineering is covered. Um, it's for next year's 2022 curb ramps that it, it, engineering will not be covered. So my question is. Is there any way to um, strategically utilize that money for both projects for for your fees? Um, we could we could probably look into designing some of the ramps for the future. I'm not exactly sure how many we would be able to get done with also keeping enough for construction this year, mm -hmm. but um, it's something we could probably look into. Just, all right, just I, I can probably answer to that for you. Considering it's the same body that's giving the grants, if you want to change your scope, you need to go to them get approval for it. They're not going to go ahead and approve you doing doing stuff with money that they no longer support that for. So it's highly unlikely it would be my. And I get that, but I think if we don't ask, the answer is always no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just one more question for me. Um, you've already submitted these these next two that we're voting on, right? Um, they're submitted. They need the resolutions in order to be finalized. Okay, just because I want to put it out there for the public's knowledge. Um, Due to time constraints and schedules, um, Gilmore offered to submit these, and if Borough Council should not vote on them, uh, they've graciously offered to eat the costs uh, going forward. Um, I know, you know, we just lost our borough manager. Um, communication was probably a little, you know, struggling with, um, you know, Micah taking over as interim. 
Um, so it's a um, unusual circumstance. Um, that's why I'm, I'm willing to vote for this. Anyone else? All right. In your roll call vote, please. Yes. Mr. Bowers? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Lawful? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Sherlock? Yes. Mr. Yeager? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. All right, motion. Uh, 90, a call authorizing the borough engine application for a CD grant funding in the amount of $581,116 to the Bucks County Development of Housing and Community Development underwrite certain improvements to the Manor Park and Playground. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. Well, let, let, uh, let's have the engineer go if they want to add anything about this one. So um, it's a fairly similar situation to CDBG, um, except uh, uh, the obvious difference being it would be more difficult to subsidize engineering costs. Um, but um, looking looking at it, we think we could also do this as a design build um, and hopefully get a majority of the park built, if not the entire thing, depending on how bids were to come in. So it, it would be a similar situation where, where we would bid this as a design build project as, as opposed to what we would normally do is uh, for us to design it and then uh, bid it to the contractors. Okay. Anyway. Mr. Parker, may I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, as with the last uh, motion, last March we did, again, a, a application was submitted for $697,339 uh, for this same project, uh, which we did not receive uh, any monies for that. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and, well, I guess my first question is the disparity in the numbers, how it's cheaper this year than it was last year. Um, so, okay, sure. Here you go. That's the first question. All right, um, so we submitted only the construction costs this year. Uh, the remaining 116,000 were strictly engineering related costs. So obviously okay. we didn't submit asking for those. Um, but even with the amount we're asking for, um, we think we could try to do it as a design build and see what bids come in and see how much of this park we could build if they were to award the full amount. Um, and another scenario, I guess, if they weren't to award the full amount and they awarded a, awarded a partial amount, um, we could potentially look into use, using it to supplement contract uh, or uh, su supplement construction costs. Um, the only issue with the CDBG grants is we only have, uh, they only last a year. So you have to, if it's awarded in April, it has to be finished by the following uh, end of March. And, so, uh, I apologize. Go no, ahead. you're good. Um, and there's currently a, a $250,000 grant application that's still open under review that hasn't been awarded yet. So if that were to be awarded, and if CDBG were to award less than the full amount, um, this could you know, be combined to potentially get, maybe, maybe to possibly phase the park into, into doing maybe the parking or the playground equipment and then doing a phase two where you do the other half. Okay, so it's looking like this would cost, if we, we, if we get awarded the full amount, it's gonna cost 116,000, possibly a little plus, a little less. Is that not, if, not if we're able to do it as a design build, there would still be engineering costs associated with project management and uh, construction inspection costs, but it, it would probably not cost the full, the full 116,000 now. Okay. And in re referencing uh, the comment that was made by um, Ms. Dreisbach, it, it was myself who commented that I didn't think we had the uh, luxury of affording this. It, it wasn't that I didn't want it, it's, I'm sure I'm certain everybody would love to have it, uh, you know, a new park down there. But did we have the, do we have the, can we commit to that kind of money if we, get, if we receive this? We're having a very tough year. We have, uh, we're having, you know, it's, it's uh, pennies to pennies just as we are right now. So uh, that's, that was where my comment came from. And uh, I just feel that we have to be very careful with how we're spending. 
And, oh, I'd like uh, to add a comment that, um, that, that I think it's really important. The first award um, is kind of off the beaten track and, and for the kids to, to cross the highways to get to a park when they, there is one currently in the neighborhood and there should be one going forward in the neighborhood. My two cents, we already own it. We're responsible for it. I don't think maintaining um, the areas that we are already responsible for is a luxury. I think it's a requirement. I, I agree. Um, okay. One last thing, Ms. Parker. Yes. I would love to see more equipment down there. If if us spending $40,000 or $50,000 on equipment to make sure that there's equipment, I'd rather do that than throw money away on a, on a, uh, you know, a grant that we might not receive. So that was the direction I was thinking about. So if, if I could question on that level, um, since we're recycling this one pretty much, um, what are we looking at from a cost perspective for processing? Uh, for the application amount? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was probably about 2,500. Uh, the CDBG and the Manor Park cost the same and they, they were, I think, combined total was under 5,000. So $2,500 with the chance of getting a half a million, I think is a gamble that the town needs to take personally, but that's just my two cents. Okay, agreed. Kurt wanna... Wade, um, when you guys do these um, proposals, do you do an inspection of the current playground? Yeah, we, we had we had photos from before. I mean, again, this is just a recycled grant, so we already had all that information from I'm just the curious, what, just for the public and my knowledge, uh, I don't get down there too often, except when I go to the courthouse, but uh, what's the estimated life left in, in those, the equipment that's there? I mean, I, I didn't, I did not do the original application, so I'm not fully familiar with it, but from the photos, I mean, it's overdue currently. I believe this is the same set that, that a street sign was used to block off a, um, a, a, a slide that's over there. Yeah. So it's pretty bad. And yeah, and I and I had a conversation with Mr. Mitchell before he passed away, um, and uh, he he said it's an insurance issue going forward, so it's something that we should do um, rather than delay it. But I am down there, and there are children that are utilizing the park, so it's not like it's a park that is underutilized. There is somebody there in the afternoons every day. Anyone else? All right. We have a roll call, please. <coughs> yes. And I'm sorry. Who who um who was the first and who was the second on this one? I don't. I'm, I apologize. I don't have that. I think I was the first. I think I was the second. Yeah, Jaeger and Bowers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Mr. Bowers. Yes. Ms. Alaho? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Sherlock? Yes. Mr. Yeager? Yes. And Mr. Parker? That is all of the action items. Uh, we have a, uh, for the library, uh, they received three letters of interest. So, we'll do no things, uh, we'll do it time, I don't think we can't hear, Ted, Ted, you're breaking up, we can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. thought that was me. No, can't hear. It's all every other word. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. It has to be either the phone that I'm on or my internet connection. I apologize. Um, we have three letters of interest for three open positions for three year terms on the library board. Um I guess we're gonna uh, vote on each and uh, go from there. Uh, so, 
Jeff nominated for a position for the Ted, once again, once again, I can't hear you. You're breaking up. I am leaning into the phone. Um, Can I just make a motion for the first person? Yeah, or a uh, nomination? Or a... Well, I, I'd like to have a discussion first. Oh, okay. Go ahead. All right. Well, uh, we, are have you, to, are you... we have to nominate somebody and then we can have discussion. So can I have a nomination for one of the positions? I'd like to nominate Eva Kastner Pushi, Pushi, P U S C H I. You have nomination. Anybody else want to nominate anybody else for this one position? We'll go down the line after that. All right. So we're going to open this up for discussion real fast. So my question was, I know Mr. Mitchell had, had made the recommendation that we not fulfill uh, the these positions. So is that something we're going to consider or are we filling them? I, I'm assuming we're filling them, but is there a reason why we're disregarding his his uh, recommendation? Because it, it never went anywhere. I mean, the timing, I don't know, do we, well, we have a nomination at this point. Do May, may I? May I say something, Mr. Parker? Or there, there was some discussion because there was some angst about the the, the former board, as it as it were, uh, to a point where we had meetings with the Peace Center, and um, so it didn't seem that we were able to work out uh, an amicable board, and so that was why Mr. Mitchell had thought that possibly we could go down to maybe five people versus uh, seven. Uh, it is required uh, in order to get the state aid to have between five and seven members of the board. So right now we have uh, four. So three people, I think they're all very qualified. Uh, I mean, if, the, uh, if you wanted to back it down, I think we have to fix the ordinance on that though, because I think it's by ordinance how it stands. But that's all I know. Else? Are the are the people causing the angst in the peace center still on the board? No, their term was up March first. Okay. And they have not reapplied. These are three brand new uh, applications. So we have we have room for three for three people and we have three people that applied. So the three, I mean, if we just bring up the three people, I mean, um, I saw one of the letters, uh, Dina Tanzillo, I would, um, I'd like to nominate her when we get to that. Um, so we had yours, Nancy, Dina, and- I, I will nominate Eileen, I, I guess it's Eileen. Yes. Um, so if we if we're going to proceed and fill these positions, then I'm fine nominating the three who um, put in letters and to fill the three positions. Okay, appreciate Randy. that. Randy. Yes, Mr. Can, President. One individual, y'all. Can we since they vote? Vote no. You can vote for all three of them. You you can vote for all of them at the same time. All right, so we've received nominations for all three positions with the three people who have. It. So if everyone's OK, we're going to do one vote to accept the three nominations. So uh, Virginia, can we have a roll call, please? Yeah. Could, could you read the names, Ted, of the three people again? It's uh, Eva Kastner, Puchel, Dina Tanzillo, and Eileen Grossman Bailey. Yeah. Okay. We good? All right, Virginia, roll call. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bowers? Yes. Ms. Alaho? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Mrs. Sherlock? Yes. 
Mr. Yeager. Yes. And Mr. Parker. Yes. Mr. Parker, may I make a comment, please? Yes, what we forgot to include in the, I don't know that it's necessary, but what we forgot to include that this is a three year term to end I March said, 1st, 2024. I didn't say the date, but I did say the three year term. Okay. So we're good, right? Yeah, unless Randy says otherwise. All right. You're good. All right. The agenda, I don't know what to do. Um, I will like to make a comment before everybody else under public, under uh, on FIP. You're cutting out, Ted. I, I really wanted to, for, for to be heard, but on the 25th of February, we lost our borough manager, Scott Mitchell. Um, he had been for a while. Um, he is a very personal man and never really made it public. Um, those of them who worked with him may have known. Um, it was a pleasure working with him. He was a, a, a fountain patient and became a good friend. Um, and I'm going to miss him. Uh, would anybody else like to speak? Uh, you mean about Mr. P about Mr. Mitchell? Just um, I, I concur with I concur with what you said regarding his professional and professionalism and his uh, did have a wealth of knowledge that was extremely helpful. Definitely will be missed and he left some big shoes to fill. Absolutely. And he didn't finish this job. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to extend my condolences to his family too and his parents, his mother and his stepfather who live in Levittown uh, where he grew up in Highland Park and his uh, brothers and sisters. He had a very close family and uh, he was a really quality human being. And uh, on behalf of our firm, we will miss him. He was incredibly hardworking. There weren't a lot of managers that you can call up. who will tell you he was out one or two o'clock in the morning checking out a hookah bar uh, because there were complaints. I don't know any other manager that would do that, but he did. And, uh, um, may his memory be for a blessing uh, to his family and to all of us. Thank you, Randy. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Does anyone else uh, understand anything for borough officials of their own? Mr. Mr. Parker, I I have a question. I don't know if the Randy can answer this. Um, I noticed that. Um, w do we need to appoint a board of appeals position, which is a UCC requirement? Because we don't have that filled right now. The uh, last person, the former person, um, I don't know if we didn't contact him or or what, but it has to be somebody, you know, semi-qualified. But it's an open position right now. So that's just one of my questions. It doesn't have to be answered this evening, but um, maybe you can give Ted some guidance and we would advertise it. I'm not sure. Yeah, which board? Which board are you talking it's about? Board of the Board of Appeals. Which one? Zoning, Housing Board of Appeals? It. I don't know if it's zoning, um, but I know it's a UCC requirement. So I'm going to guess it's zoning. I don't. It's. I don't think it's. It's not listed as housing. Okay, we'll look into it then, though. Okay. Um, You're done. Also, I'm sorry. It's already yes. done. Uh, one last thing. I would like it sometime in the future. It can be, you know, soon. It can be a few months from now. Um, uh, Don. Um, now his last name. Forget. I, I'm missing his last name. He had asked about giving a presentation about uh, basically uh, the Williamson Park and uh, the, the geology of it and the, you know, flooding and, and that sort of thing. And I'd like to see it sometime in the future that he be, uh, you know, as part of the EAC, he'd be allowed to give a short presentation, um, a few minutes. So I'd like 
that to be considered. Yeah, it's Don Rice, by the Rice. way. Rice. I don't know. It just escaped me for a moment. And um, so, and that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Bauer. Mr. Parker, I have two things. Um, one, on Sunday, March 21st, the Friends of Morrisville Dog Park will be doing their annual dog wash at Fort Paul Doggy Daycare um, from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, if you go on to Facebook or Instagram, you can look up Friends of Morrisville Dog Park for the email address or phone number to call in to uh, make an appointment. We're going to do them by appointment only this year because of COVID. Um, they'll come out and pick up the dogs outside and keep everybody at a distance. What time is that, Justin? It's from 9 to 12 and 1 to 3. Thank you. Um, and my second uh, thing is, I just want to comment, um, with Scott's passing and uh, Micah stepping up to, to fulfill the borough manager position, uh, I think council should uh, at least give some thought to some sort of stipend or out of class pay for Micah. I mean, he's essentially doing two jobs and I know he's, you know, probably has the help of all the staff down there pulling together because of this unfortunate situation. But it's just something we may want to think about, especially if it's going to, if our borough manager search takes any time, you know, more than, you know, another few weeks, because it is a, it's already been probably a month that he's been doing a position and it could be a month or two longer, possibly more. I agree with that. Add up at the, uh, Next session. I have a quick announcement, if I may. Um, as most people probably already know, and if you don't, um, the um, Marsville Yardley Area Rotary Club will not be holding the Easter egg hunt this year. Um, we are extremely hopeful that it comes back next year. Um, we are uh, offering a service of um, delivering candy filled eggs. Uh, to the 19067 zip code. Um, along with that, um, the Easter Bunny is scheduling uh, deliveries to the children for, um, uh, for some uh, photos that will be um, uh, properly spaced in, in proximity to one another. Um, so we can make sure that we keep with all the um, COVID-19 um, uh, requests and, uh, and we're, we're offering a service that um, is safe for all. Um, if you're interested, um, the deadline to ask for the Easter Bunny is um, March 20th. It's, uh, you, you can find it advertised on uh, Facebook through the Morrisville Yardley Area Rotary Club's page. Um, you can also find it on various local sites. Um, but if you um, want to uh, send an email, you can send it to rotary, R-O-T-A-R-Y, 19067 at gmail.com and put in your request. Thank you. Very nice. Else? All right. I, also, I, oh. I, I have one one thing. Um, and it actually, um, it, if, um, Chief McClay could answer this. Maybe I was speaking to uh, the, the hotel down on behind La Villa in in the shopping center, and he was telling me that at the Fourth of July or any time fireworks are being sold, Memorial Day, that um, that becomes a mess for them back in that parking lot, and I'm not sure if there's anything we as a town maybe the officers can do to help him. He said that he has a lot of problems with people going into the uh, fireworks shop and bothering his hotel. Um, there's a lot of traffic, he said, and, and, and with the cars going in and out, the people who are staying in the hotel are having issues as well. So I don't know if there's something you can look into to help him maybe during those big holidays. Um, I don't have his name in front of me, but it's the owner of the hotel. Uh, hold on, I can look at my phone. He's to okay, all right, because because and I I too have seen that traffic during those holiday big firework purchases, and it's it is a mess. Very, very busy there, but that gentleman has never contacted me in the seven years I've been here. Okay, I'll tell him to do that. Thank you. Ted, I forgot to announce about the household the household hazardous waste collection, which is um, April third at the college. So that's uh, coming up. 
so uh, but I believe it's on our, our website so people can check it out but you know there's there's only a few a year so uh, April 3rd is the next one for lower bucks and it's being held at the college No one else uh, will move to adjourn. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Uh, we have a brief. If Harry's able to secure the Zoom, we'll go into exact. Yeah, if the members of the public could please exit and we'll halt recording and streaming. So please just give us a minute. Um, after that's done, I'll block the Zoom meeting and then you guys can converse. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, I hope we didn't pay you to watch that whole meeting. No, 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 not at all. Not, starting the timer now. <laughs> you just did it for the fun, huh? Uh, I'm doing plenty of other things, man. I got plenty of other work. All good. I'm home, so it's fine. It's good to join you guys. Hopefully, it won't take you too long. Well, it looks like... Uh, uh... So there's an issue uh, by leaving. Uh, John has uh, trapped. Uh, Harry always looks like he's at Nassau, especially with all the. Uh, we still have members of the public on. Yes. Okay. Peers, yeah. can we kick them off? I don't know how the system works. I could just while you're here, if anyone needs help getting um, getting um, uh, appointments for vaccines, my kids have been volunteering to do it. Um, we've gotten about 50 people appointments who are otherwise qualified for vaccines who couldn't get it on their own. And if you all I need is all I need is your name, your date of birth, your legal address, your cell phone number and your email address. Uh, and if you're underage, if there's a condition, some kind of, you know, because people who are qualified, obviously teachers are qualified, and clergy, um, people who are a certain age, those of us who are more mature, um, and people who have underlying immun immunocompromised diseases, cancer survivors, um, and the like who are qualified. So if you'll get me that information, I will add it to their list. They, they start, they actually set their alarm clocks five minutes of midnight every night and get up because that's when you get it and they snag people appointments and they've gotten 50 people appointments um it's been pretty impressive i'm very proud of them and they're doing uh, the lord's work so i'm really 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 appreciative so but i would love to help especially people that we know and love and counsel who were who need vaccines uh randy i'm sorry to interrupt but um john hit the wrong button and uh, the, we're trapped in a cloud meeting with a life-size system, which is why there's like double and there was all the echo before I muted it. 
Unfortunately, I can't just remove them from the meeting because they won't be able to come back in, which means the room won't be able to join. So what I have to do is end the meeting and then you'll all have to rejoin it in like a minute. Um, and I, I do apologize. It's just- So we should all get off, the, we should all get off is what you're saying, right? Yeah, I'm gonna cancel this meeting and then I'm gonna start it up again. So uh, please just rejoin with the same information in just about a minute, okay? Okay. okay.